Let's take a look inside a Sainsbury's dimmable LED lamp. You will notice that everything sounds different, everything looks different. This is because of travel and trying to set up a studio in the smallest, most cramped accommodation yet. So let's open this. The reason I chose the dimmable lamp is because I wanted to see the circuitry in it because the dimmable circuitry is going to be more complex than the conventional circuitry because it has to allow for the fact it's been controlled by a sine wave dimmer, a triac dimmer. And that is not actually the best way to control LEDs, but they've found some interesting ways around that. And well, we'll find out if this uses one of those interesting ways or have they found some incredibly cheating, sneaky way. I'm just gonna crush this. My apologies if there's a loud crunching noise. I'm just gonna crush this cover. Uh, no, that's not working either. Mm. <laughs> Right, uh, is this going to work? I'll try not to uh, destroy the circuitry inside in the process of trying to open this. Oh, this is so glued shut. They really don't want this coming apart, do they? That's fine. Right, tell you what, if this isn't going to come apart easily. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Here we are. We are in. First thing I'm noticing here. And it is very odd, right? Okay, so quite a lot of circuitry. Uh, let's zoom down in this. I shall just uh, stand up in this cronky seat here uh, and just make sure this is focused into position. I'm seeing uh, the control chip, a little transistor here. I'm seeing one LED that is a slightly different colour from the others. I wonder if that's just to nudge the colour temperature or if it's for another reason. Maybe it's a different multiple of LEDs and they've kind of colour coded it that way. But I'd guess it's just for fine tuning the colour temperature, which is quite odd. Um, other than that, it looks fairly conventional. So I shall take a picture of this and we can reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I'm going to have to be careful here. I've got the, this is a reflective image and the lighting is so close that it's possibly going to reflect in it. My apologies if that happens. We have the incoming supply coming on these contacts that I completely managed to snap off and they go to the bridge rectifier. The output of the bridge rectifier then has the positive going to um, this divider here. One of them is, well, I'll show you in the schematic afterwards. One is going to a, what I believe to be a load resistor for keeping the triax latch in the dimmer. Another is going via this diode towards the smoothing capacitor, which has a its own current regulator to keep it charged up. The capacitor is quite odd. And we've got some sense resistors down here, um, some decoupling capacitors to protect the transistors inside the linear regulators. And then we've got this mystery chip here, which I think I know what it is. Uh, let's cut straight to the schematic, shall we? And then I'll try and uh, work out what chip this is. So I shall zoom in this. I'm just trying to angle myself here. This is a very, very cramped space for filming. There's a train pass in the background as well. And lots of seagulls. It's a very noisy place. It's the first time I've been in accommodation I've had to use earplugs every single night. Uh, Here's the incoming AC supply, a 68 ohm resistor, fusible resistor, but also limits inrush current. We've got the bridge direct far, and then we've got, I'll just add this track in here. We've got the supply dividing. It goes through this diode to this capacitor here, uh, and then also via this load resistor, which I believe is to uh, pose a load when the LEDs are not lit. I've, drawn, I've abbreviated all the LEDs to just one LED there. And uh, that means that the, it stops the track from uh, turning off just by providing that load at other parts of the sine wave because of the way the circuitry works. This little capacitor here is a decoupling capacitor. It's across that linear regulator inside, as is this one, because the capacitor here, the main reservoir capacitor, which is only rated 300 volts at 8.2 microfarad, it is also charged via current regulated supply. And I think this resistor here is used to sense a voltage across that resistor and it will basically regulate the current down if it's starting to get too high or even stop charge it at all if it goes too high. Um, there are a smattering of other components. There's a 13K resistor and a capacitor. Don't know what they're for because this chip is didn't uh, call up a sort of direct hit. I found a similar one though. And the other factor is this little transistor device, which is not a transistor, it's an active chip. And it's designed to reduce ripple by basically speaking, it can detect, it can monitor the 
current flowing through the LED and if it sees too much ripple it actually self-regulates current itself to actually defeat that and actually give a nice stable light output. Now I can show you the chip that I found because I've featured it before. Oh, another thing here. Uh, this little chip, the transistor, had lots and lots of characters on it. 7642BR or 7642ATAR, very tiny text. And Q2131E2, if you want to have a wee go at finding that. Uh, it, uh, it's not something I've searched for too deeply because I found this. One we've looked at before in another video. Let me just see if this is actually going to fit in. It's not going to fit in. Let's zoom out a bit until it does fit in. This is the VAS 1106A chip, which is very similar. I've drawn in the other components, but they don't actually belong to this circuitry. Particularly these little decoupling capacitors, it doesn't show that. And that sense resistor, it doesn't show that either. But it gives you the basic idea. Uh, so this one has two current regulators with the uh, resistive uh, current sensing. And one of them does the uh, 200 ohm load resistor in this instance. And the other one does the uh, capacitor here for the running the LEDs. Uh, the way these uh, resistors are cascaded like this means that when the uh, LEDs are lit, it actually reduces the current through this to virtually zero because uh, it's designed to actually effectively turn this load resistor off while the LEDs are on just for efficiency. Um, and what else can I say here? It is quite interesting. This tiny little transistor thing is doing an awful lot. Uh, it's got its own little gain circuit and like charge pump circuit for this capacitor here. And it just basically, if it sees ripple, it will gradually nudge the current down until the ripple reduces to a sensible level. And by doing that, it means that you're going to get consistent flicker-free dimming across the full waveform. Now keep in mind that the way this is designed to work, if this is the sine wave coming in, uh, a phase angle control dimmer literally either turns on or off at the zero crossing point for a half intensity. In this case, it would just be on for that amount of time. And during that time, this chip would be charging that capacitor up. Uh, and the less time it's on, the less the capacitor can charge up. And that's basically how it controls the intensity. But quite interesting, but also strangely complex. But there we have it. The Sainsbury's... Um, dimmable LED lamp. It seems quite a sensible design.